What is up, my 3D nerds? Um, so today I wanted to just go over a quick tip about adaptive remeshing and using an attribute to drive where we want to have the remeshing happen, basically. Um, so yeah, let's just get started and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So we have a grid SOP that we've thrown down and we'll give ourselves a little resolution. Um, so we can see what we're working with and then we have an attribute paint which we will use to uh to drive our our remeshing and you know obviously you can use any any setup that creates a float uh, value so you know using a noise or or whatever kind of fall offs or things you want to use um so uh we want to click on show handle to turn on our our tool options basically and then uh, control shift and left click to um, increase our brush radius and then we will paint a little just circle in the middle um, and then you know we can we can change the opacity so we have a little bit more of a uh, a gradient between the values um, and then let's turn on our visualization of that attribute um, so what we want is for this this uh, center to be uh, densely remeshed and the outside to be very uh, sparse. So what we will do next is look at our remesh node. So if you look at the remesh, um, what it does is uniformly uh, remeshes the whole surface uh, with uh, triangles and that's not what we're after right now. Um, so in the edge lengths, you can change it from uniform to adaptive, and by default, it will uh, just kind of calculate what it thinks where it can use larger um, larger triangles to fill in the surface, and and smaller ones where it decides you know it needs more uh, detail to fully represent the surface. So. Which, you know, that that's fine for some situations, but what we're after is being able to decide and tell it, okay, this is where I want to have more resolution and this is where I want to have less. So we're, we're going to do that using the attribute that we created uh, with the attribute paint or, again, like I said, with any other attribute uh, creation method you want to use. So... Um, we have to look here under the control attributes section and what we're going to be using is the target mesh size. Um, I haven't used the min and max size attributes because I think the target mesh size does a pretty good job on its own. So I'll show you, um, I'll show you what that does. Uh, but if you turn on the min and max sizes here, you know, you can, you can get a sense of what they're, what they're doing, um, you know, it's just setting a range for the uh, for the uh, size of the uh, breakup of the of the mesh and um, the relative density and gradation are also, you know, just options allowing you to change how the mesh is distributed. Um, so we'll revert these back to the defaults real quick. Okay, um, so back to our attribute here. Uh, we want to then use a um, attribute wrangle here, and we're just going to turn on the target mesh size and then uh, set that equal to um, the mask attribute that we've created. So now those should be just equal values, and you can see we have our target mesh size here. So if we plug this in to the remesh right now, a couple things will happen. So um, one thing is, you know, you might kind of expect like I did that the one, the one float value, so this area would be more dense and the zero would be less dense, but that's the opposite of how the uh, remesh node interprets it so it would have all of this area the purple area being very dense and the red area being uh, very sparsely um, uh, 
uh, remeshed. And so we want to reverse that basically. And that's just something that I learned playing around with this. So we'll need to remap our attribute. Uh, we're going to remap the target mesh size or we'll let's let's here let's do this before we'll remap the uh, mask attribute from zero to one to one to uh, zero so this is what we want um, and so this way the inner area will be more dense and the outer area will be less dense and then another important really important tip uh, that I found uh, just uh, playing around with this is you need to set your minimum value to something that is not zero because if it's zero basically you're telling the remesh to make that as small as it possibly can basically and so like even on this just basic grid uh if the value is set to zero and you throw this into the remesh it, it will base like it crashed my houdini a couple times um just doing the tests so just make sure this is not set to zero. Um, and then, so we've remapped our mask and then we've uh, increased the minimum value to a non-zero number. And so then we're setting our target mesh size equal to that um, remapped mask attribute. And then when we go into the remesh, you can see it updates very quickly and also is working exactly um, as anticipated where the area we've painted onto the mesh is more dense and uh, we have this kind of gradient outward towards uh, the very sparsely uh, remeshed areas of the outer part of the grid. So it's working, you know, perfectly basically uh, now and the gradation allows you to play a little bit with, uh, with the um, the difference i think or, or how the how the fall off between the most dense and least dense region is um and i don't think any of these controls when you're using the target mesh size will do anything um because i think they're being overwritten um but basically this is all that that we need and that i needed for the situations um that i was using this setup for so yeah, I think this is a really great way to be able to optimize some situations where you need really dense uh, mesh in certain areas. And then, you know, when you don't need it in the other areas, this is a really good way to optimize um, your scene. So it just, you know, everything's running a little bit smoother. So I hope this is a helpful tip for you. And uh, I will look forward to seeing you in the next one. Peace.